Hello guys, Winston here. Up until recently, the ShapeOko 3 was designed to work exclusively with the DeWalt DWP611 trim router as a spindle. This wasn't a bad thing as the 611 is a very capable router. The diversity of projects people have completed with this setup shows that it's certainly not a limiting factor. But the choice of supporting the DeWalt was somewhat arbitrary and the router market isn't a monopoly. One popular alternative in the CNC community is the Makita RT0701. Unfortunately, you can't just drop a Makita into the ShapeOko 3 because it's a few millimeters skinnier than the DeWalt. You need a reduction bushing to make it fit, like this one that Carbide3D recently made available and which Edward Ford sent me. So now that this door has been opened, I had to answer the question of whether or not the Makita is better than the DeWalt, so I bought one. Price-wise, depending on sales, both can be had for about $100. Both use a one and a quarter horsepower variable speed motor with closed loop control, and both take quarter inch bits in proprietary collets. If you're just taking checkboxes, these two are very similar options. The one thing that really distinguishes the Makita is its broader RPM range. It'll throttle down to as low as 10,000 RPM or as high as 30,000 RPM, in theory at least. Actual load free testing using a super cheap optical tachometer from Amazon showed that these claims were justified. So, this is important because certain materials are very sensitive to whether or not you're using an appropriate pairing of spindle speed and linear feed rate. Having that lower minimum RPM can be really useful. One other thing I was interested in, as someone with roommates, was the acoustic characteristics of each router. Neither of these would ever be considered quiet, but could one be less offensive than the other? Looking at the frequency response across the DeWalt's usable RPM range of 16,000 to 27,000 RPM, the Makita is a little less shrill than the DeWalt. Its acoustic energy is spread across a broader spectrum, which makes it just a little less annoying to listen to. However, I was surprised to find that it's actually louder than the DeWalt. At 27,000 RPM, the Makita was several decibels louder than the DeWalt. It isn't all bad news for the Makita though, because you do have the option to run it below 16,000 RPM, and in this range it's definitely quieter than the DeWalt at its lowest speed. For my final data point, I wanted to see how well each router did under load. So to do that, I ran a pretty basic test. Take a block of wood, in this case some scraps cut from a 2x4, and just plow through it with a shape oko. I'm looking to see how much each router bogs down, if at all. At 16,000 RPM, I'll take a quarter inch cut at 40, 60, 80, and 100 inches per minute. Now, I need to head off any knowledgeable machinists before they complain. I do realize that the proper way to achieve a higher material removal rate at a constant RPM would be to cut deeper, not faster. That way the ratio of spindle speed to feed rate remains the same. I don't really care about the surface finish of what I'm cutting. It was just faster to do a control F to find and replace all of my feed rate commands in my G code instead of producing multiple versions of this pocketing job. In my testing, the Makita at its worst dropped no more than 100 RPM. Its closed loop speed controller is clearly doing its job. In fact, in overspeed conditions, such as when you're throttling down, it'll drastically cut power to the motor. A bit unnecessary perhaps, but it shows that the motor controller is working. The DeWalt generally stayed within about 150 RPM of its unloaded self. Don't focus on the numbers too much since I was eyeballing the data, it's basically as good as the Makita. So where does this leave us in the Makita versus DeWalt battle? Well, I hate making official recommendations, so I'll say that, in my opinion, the Makita's lower RPM range, compact dimensions, and slightly lower price make it more versatile than the DeWalt. Is it the best choice? Far from it. It makes a tremendous racket at full tilt, the collet is more annoying than the DeWalt's, and built-in LEDs would have been a nice touch. These are all compromises I can live with though. I don't love the Makita, but I do like it. Now I think it's important to point out that these are routers that you can buy for $100. They will not be perfect, but they'll get you started just fine. If you want something closer to a proper CNC spindle, you're going to have to shell out more money. There are some crazy units out there that exceed 1000 watts and some even use water cooling. Those are well beyond the scope of this video and my budget. And that's all I have for this week. Amazon links to the DeWalt and Makita routers are in the description below. You're not obligated to use my referral links, but they do help subsidize experiments like this. Thank you all very much for watching, and I'll be back with more CNC-related nonsense in... about two weeks.